right, so the last part of ionic compounds that we need to talk about is when we have ionic compounds that have polyatomic ions in there. So polyatomic ions are ions that have more than one atom. Those atoms are covalently bonded together, but if a polyatomic ion is going to combine with a cation or an anion, it's going to make an ionic bond. So when, they, when polyatomic ions that are in an ionic compound are put into water, the cation and the anion, so usually the polyatomic ion is going to be your anion, those two are going to separate. But the polyatomic ion is going to stay together. Covalent bonds are not going to separate in water. So these polyatomic ions are going to have to be memorized. So it will take some time. I would suggest making flashcards. If you go into your textbook on page 257, there is a table 9.3. You're responsible for all of those. So make sure you make flashcards and really understand them and know them. All right, so most polyatomic ions end in either ite or ate. So I-T-E or A-T-E. So these are some of the examples that end in ite. So we have sulfite, we have nitrite, we have chloride. If we look, it's SO3 minus, NO3 minus, ClO3 minus. Now if we look at our eight, we have SO4 minus, which is sulfate. We have NO4 minus, which is nitrate. And we have ClO3 minus, which is chlorate. So if we look at our eight versus our eight, we can see that each of these has one more oxygen for it to have an eight ending. For it to have an eight ending, it needs to have one less oxygen than the eight ending. So if there's a hydrogen in front, in front of the polyatomic ion, you need to name that first. So an example would be HCO3 minus, which is hydrogen carbonate. You always want to name that hydrogen. If there's two hydrogens, you need to say that. And you can do that by saying di. So di means two. So H2PO4 minus would be dihydrogen phosphate. So the best way that I think to learn these is to learn them by families. What do I mean by families? So different polyatomic ions are going to look very similar. They're going to differ in either the amount of hydrogens they have or the amount of oxygens they have. Something that changes them slightly. So one example of a family, family is the chlorine family. So ClO minus is going to be hypochlorite. So hypo meaning that there's only one, so there's less oxygens than normally are. And then chloride, because we're in our chlorine family. ClO2 minus, that's just chloride. ClO3 minus is going to be chlorine. So if you go back to the rule we learned uh, earlier, chlorite has two oxygens, chlorate has three oxygens, and then ClO4 minus is perchlorate. Meaning that there's one more oxygen than there was in the normal eight ending. So this is one of the only families that really has four different ones that you have to worry about, most of them have two or three. So there is going to be six families total. Chlorine being the first one, and then you have your chromium family, your phosphorus family, your sulfur family, the carbon family, and the nitrogen family. You're responsible for all six of those, so make sure you learn them. And then we have some of our loners. They are not part of families, they are just alone. 
So our first one is acetate, which is C2H3O2 minus. Then we have cyanide, which is Cn minus. We have hydroxide, which is OH minus. Then we have oxalate, which is C2O4 2 minus. We have silicate, which is SiO3 2 minus. And then we have our only uh, cation polyatomic, which is NH4 plus, and that's ammonium. So now we have to be able to name compounds that have polyatomics in them. So the first one we have here is FeNO3-3. So as you notice, I put the polyatomic ion in parentheses. This is something that you have to do as well, because if those parentheses aren't there, this three on the outside, it, it doesn't really help us. With this three on the outside, that means that this entire polyatomic ion, there's three of those. Whereas if we didn't have this, we'd be left guessing maybe there should be six oxygens. It would make it confusing. So having those parentheses around our polyatomic ion is super important. And it also helps us to remember that when put in water, our polyatomic ion is not coming apart. So now in order to name this, the first thing that I would do is split it up into our different ions like we did previously. So we know that we have iron. And since the, um, the subscript for our polyatomic ion is three, we know that our charge for iron is three plus. We're still going to be using the crisscross method, method here. And then we have NO3. So NO3 is NO3 minus, since iron has a uh, subscript of just one, so we know this is iron. We know that we have to use our Roman numeral here, because iron is one of those transition metals. And NO3 is nitrate. So we have iron, three, nitrate. All right, let's try this next one. So now we have PbSO42. Notice that SO4 is also in parentheses since that is our polyatomic ion. Here, we have to know that SO4 has a charge of two minus. So if we were to crisscross these charges, we would, if SO4 has two minus, we know that this could be two. But it doesn't make sense to have two on both of these, right? Because if we did, then they would just cancel out. But that's not the case here because we have a two. So we know that we would have to multiply the charge of PV by two, since there's two of those SO4. So the charges here would actually be four plus and then SO4 would have the charge of two minus, which we know that because we memorized that. So now we can write this as lead four lead four sulfate. It might take a little time in order for you to realize what the charges are, but once you have the charges down and you have memorized all the polyatomic ions, it will become easier. Alright, so now we're going to have to be able to go from the names to the formula. First, like always, I would write the uh, cation and anion, for, anion first with the charges and then put it together. So chromium and then it's six. Our Roman numeral tells us that it's six, and phosphate is PO4 two minus. Right. Sorry, three minus. I forget sometimes also. All right. So now we're going to crisscross our charges.
and this can be reduced. So whenever it can be reduced, make sure you do that. Cr PO42, because we can divide each of these by both of our um, subscripts by three, and we get one over here and two here. So Cr PO42. All right, last one. We have titanium two. So it'd be titanium two plus, and then acetate, which is C2H3. O2 minus, so if we crisscross our charges, we would have Ti C2 H3 O2 2. So once again, our polyatomic ion is in parentheses.